it's Hannah from Hand and Crochet and today we are making this raglan style top down sweater. We can crochet this all in one piece, there are no seams whatsoever to worry about. We begin at the neckband, we work down with this raglan shaping here and then the body and the sleeves use this really really lovely herringbone moss stitch pattern here. It's super easy to make once we get the knack of working this raglan section um, and it comes in all the sizes you could possibly want it to be and I'll pop the link to the pattern um, below. You can make it short sleeved, long sleeved, um, it's really easy to adapt the length of your sleeves and of your body. You can add a rib at the bottom, you can leave it off, there are loads of different things that you can do with this um, and I've added information in the pattern as well um, if you're making a tiny baby size to um, pop a button on at the back here to make it easier to get on and off. Um, loads of different options, so let's get going. I chose to use Swish DK Weight Yarn from We Crochet for this sweater. This is Squirrel Heather shade and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's a superwash merino wool and you can't go wrong with it, it's absolutely lovely to work with. Um, all the details of the quantities is in the pattern. Uh, you'll also need a 4.5 millimeter or G plus crochet hook or the hook that will meet the gauge for you. Then we're going to need a pair of scissors, a needle for your ends and some stitch markers. Now I'm not a massive fan of stitch markers but believe me they really help with this project and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, but for mine I use five stitch markers but you might need some more or want some more depending on how far around you want to mark. Um, and I thought I'd just also go through um, fairly quickly about the construction of this sweater. So it's a top down, so we work from the neckband down. We're going to create this neckband first, and then from that neckband we will work in rounds and we will increase and create corners that then, once we've got it to the size we want, this is called a raglan style sweater, the size that we want, we flip it and fold it over and we join these seams here. And then the body works down from here and the sleeves work up from here. Obviously this is a very, very diddy size, um, but <laughs> you get the idea. The shaping all comes from the top here and this will be um, where our shoulders sit here. This will be our body and these will be our sleeves. So, let's get going. The first thing that we need to do is work the neckband here, um, which we work in rows and then we turn it so that we then work in rounds along this sides of it. Now it sounds really complicated, but I promise it's not. So let's get cracking with that rib. So to begin the neckband, you just need to check in the pattern for the size that you're making, but all the child sizes start with a chain of eight. So we're going to pop a slip knot on the hook and then you're going to chain eight. And then working back along that chain of eight from the second chain from the hook and each along, we're going to pop a slip stitch in each. Now you can put them into the front of the stitches like this, but I like to work into the back bumps. So rotate over and find that second chain from the hook and then pop a slip stitch into that. And then again, look for the next back bump and pop a slip stitch. It might seem really fiddly, but I promise for the join that you get, um, it's really worth it, I think. So carry on working those slip stitches right to the end. So we'll end up with seven slip stitches now. And then at the end of the row, we are going to turn and then we're going to chain one and this is terribly fiddly at the beginning here because we don't have very much to hold on to so don't worry if you feel all fingers and thumbs because even I do when I start these now and there we go I've already gone ahead sorry <laughs> and I've put my hook in because we're going to do a slip stitch in the back loop only of each of the stitches across so we're heading here not for the front loop but for the back loop so a slip stitch in there and now a slip stitch rib does take a bit of time but as you can see from the finished garment it really really is worth it. So all the way to the end and all of your subsequent rows will be exactly the same here now. Your chain one and then your slip stitch into the back loop only of each. 
And now my only tip would be here is that normally, well, not normally, some people like to chain one before they turn, but I would definitely turn first and then chain one. Um, it just, there's something about it that just gives you a much neater edge to the rib, I think. Um, but do experiment and see what works for you. And then we just go for the next row with a slip stitch in the back loop only. And so then you just need to pop to the pattern and see how many rows of this you need to do for the size that you're making. And then when you've completed that number of rows, then pop back and we will join it together and start working in rounds to make the top of the sweater. Right, so now we have our neckband and I just wanted before we join everything to reassure you just how stretchy this is. So this is the size for the five to six that we're making uh, for my son Elliot, but um, this neckband would stretch to go around my neck. Uh, but what I have done in the pattern is said that for the smaller sizes, because um, garments are really tricky to get on babies, especially, aren't they? I don't know about you, but oh, I used to have such a fight sometimes with my children. Um, what you can do, rather than joining the neckline, if you don't want to have to squish it over their head, um, leave this unworked and then work the raglan section. So you don't need to join this at all, but we will for the size that I'm making. And what you can do is just put a little button fastening with a loop here. And that just gives you a little bit more space to pop it over their heads and then fasten it there if you'd like to. But do check the pattern if that's the way that you would like to do it. Um, and then what we need to do before we join this neckband, I would recommend that we pop our stitch markers in to know where our raglan um, shaping is going to be. Now, the way that we do this is to look in the pattern and in round one of the raglan shaping, it gives us numbers. So for the size that you're making, you will have four, four numbers that you'll need to know. One will be the back, one will be the side of the sleeve, one will be the front, and one will be the other side of the sleeve. Now in the five to six, you'll see in the pattern that we work in the side of 29 stitches, and then 14, then 29, then 14. So what I'm going to suggest now is that we pop stitch markers um, around the page. So we're going to join here and be ready to work here. So pop them on away from your working loop on this side of your neckband. So I'm going to be count 29 in and pop a stitch marker, 14, 29, and then the last should be 14. And that will just help us when we're working round one of the raglan. You absolutely don't have to do it this way if you don't want to, if you just like to count and work away. But I have come a cropper sometimes um, and lost my stitch count very, very easily. So go ahead and pop those stitch markers in. That's what I'm going to be doing now. Um, and then we'll be ready to work round one. So there we go, I have worked out where the ends of my rows are for my raglan increases. And now we're ready to join this band to make our neckline. Right, so to join our seam for our neckband, what I'm suggesting, I've already pulled these stitches out, I'm suggesting that we use the penultimate row rather than the actual row that sits on the top here, because what we want to do is squash those stitches as close together as possible to make a really nice, neat seam. Now, if this doesn't work for you, don't worry. You can do it the traditional way and just do it into the, um, the stitches of the last row. But it will create a much neater seam if you try it this way. So we're popping into this part of the stitch here, the penultimate one, and then the back loop of that one there. And just pop them together using a slip stitch. Um, and as I say, I pulled my stitches out before I started because they are a little tricky to find. So just give them a bit of a tug with the hook and then they should pop up at you. But even there, look, that one's hidden away from me. <laughs> Let's find it. So use your hook before you start your stitch to really pull that out and then pop your slip stitch in. Now 
The great thing is the neckband doesn't have many stitches in it at all, so you don't need to do it many times. And if you do it and you're not happy with the seam, then I really would recommend that you just have another go because um, th this is so worth getting as neat as you possibly can. Um, it's not massively noticeable because it will be on the, the side, the shoulder, um, but um, you just want it as nice as you can. So there we go. And now once that's joined, what we're going to do is flip it over and you're going to see how nice and neat that seam looks there. So once uh, once you've done your raglan, you will not be able to notice that at all. So hurrah. And now we have our stitch marker in there. That's for the last stitch that we need to work. So we can tuck that out of the way. And we now know, looking at round one of the, the raglan part of the pattern, we now know that we need to work a herringbone half double crochet in the side of 29 stitches. So that will take me to that stitch marker that I have here. So what we're going to do is begin by chaining one. And then by the side of the row, if you pull your stitches apart here, um, what you'll see is you've got these sets of Vs and then you've got this bar in the middle. So the V and then the bar is a side of a row. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So every sort of set of these Vs is a set of, of two you come across. Okay, so I've chained one and now we're going to go into the side of that first row there, the center of that V, and we're doing a herringbone half double crochet. And then we're going to yarn over and we're going to go into the middle of this section here, and that's the side of the next row and a herringbone half double crochet. And so let's slow down, we're going into the side of this next row and it's the Vs that we're looking at and we're going to pop a yarn over and pop straight in. And unlike a, a normal um, half double crochet, what we're going to be doing is when we pull our yarn through, we actually already pull it through one loop and we yarn over and pull through two to finish the stitch. So there we are, yarn over, we pop through the center of that side of the row there, we pull through one, and then we yarn over and pull through two. So we carry on using those herringbone half double crochet stitches in the side of each of the rows up until we've done 29 stitches, which should be where your first stitch marker is. But obviously if you're making a different size, your stitch marker will be in a different place. Um, so just for however many stitches it tells you to do on round one for the size that you're making. So now I've worked a herringbone half double crochet stitch in all of the sides of the rows up until my first stitch marker. And I'm going to chain one now, and then that will become a corner of our raglan. And then I'm going to carry on working in the sides of the rows up until I get to the next stitch marker. So more herringbone half double crochet stitches. I'm going to leave that stitch marker in there. I know it looks like it's, it, well it is in my way, um, but it's very useful when we come back round on the next round, you'll see. So here we go. Fiddle around Hannah, find your space. There we go. So herringbone half double crochet in there, in the side of each of the rows up until we get to the next stitch marker. Um, and make sure you pop one in where your stitch marker is because that's that's the last stitch of this set. There we are at the next stitch marker and we're going to chain one and then we're going to carry on and do exactly the same. So up until the next stitch marker are having bone half double crochet, then a chain one and then all the way to the last stitch marker and then we'll chain one. And once you get to that point, pause and come back to me because I'll show you what we do for round two. So here I am at the very last stitch there of the round and we're going to chain one and what we're going to do is not join to that first stitch. We are now going to be working in continuous rounds but I just wanted to show you just how it should look. Now we've already got this kind of shape here, we've got these chain one spaces and they are going to be our corners of our raglans. And so every time we do a round, we're going to increase and it's going to grow and grow and grow. Um, so it's really important to keep track of where those chain ones are in your sequence and where your stitch count is.
So on round two, we are launching straight in. We're going to be working in continuous rounds now, so no slip stitch to join at all. And we're going straight into that first stitch there that we made of the previous round. And we're going to put a herringbone half double crochet into that stitch there. And now I will mark that stitch, but I generally tend to do one stitch more before I pop my marker in because I find it less fiddly. So we're now going to, as well as our corners, we're going to mark that first stitch of the round. And you'll see why that's really important in a minute. And so now what we're going to be doing is working a herringbone half double crochet in each stitch up until we get to that chain one space there. So whichever size you're doing, that will be a different number, obviously. But for mine here, I've got 29 stitches to work into. And this round and all the subsequent rounds, you'll now be pleased to know is a lot easier. That first round of this raglan setup is, I would say, the trickiest part of the sweater um, because you really need to work hard at making sure that you've got the right amount of stitches, they're in the right place, and it's as neat as you possibly can make it. So if round one gave you a workout, I do apologize, but it is so worth it. Um, and it is plain sailing from now on. Right, we've arrived at our first chain one space. And now for every chain one space that we come across each round, we're going to be working a herringbone half double crochet, a chain one and a herringbone half double crochet in it. And that's going to increase each part here. We're going to add two herringbone half double crochets per corner each round. So we work them all into that same place. We do the stitch, a chain one, and then a stitch. And that is your next corner made. And so we add two here, two here, two here, and two here for every round. So then we have these stitches here that we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet into. And just make sure you catch this first one here because it's nice and easy to miss. And we just work along to the next corner. And then in the next corner, we do what we've just done there, that herringbone half double crochet, a chain one and a herringbone half double crochet all in that same corner. So if you want to carry on going all the way around, uh, working those into your corners and then come back to this corner um, and meet me here and then I'll show you how we carry on for round three. Here we are at the last corner. So I'm doing herringbone half double crochet, chain one and herringbone half double crochet. And then we've arrived back at this stitch marker, which is the beginning of our round. So we're going to carry on in continuous rounds now. So no joining or anything there. And it tells us for round three, we need to um, herringbone half double crochet in each stitch to the next chain one space. So we begin there with that one. And as I say, I always do an extra one before I pop my stitch marker in. But obviously I pop it in the first stitch of the round. And that will keep us on track. And then we just repeat what we've done on the previous round. So we're going to a herringbone half double crochet in each stitch up until that chain one space. And then we create ourselves another corner there. And then we herringbone half double crochet, corner, herringbone half double crochet, corner. And then if you meet me back here, when you come to this um, chain one space here and make this corner, I'll show you how we carry on and get ready for round four here. So we've come to our final chain one space here. So we're ready to make our corner. And what you'll notice now is that on the previous round, we were ready then to launch straight into um, the next round as it were, but we still have one more stitch to go because we have increased. So our, our start of the round has moved round one moved over one should be the better way of saying it, Hannah. So we still have one more stitch to go there and then we're ready to work the next round. So we've done one, two, three rounds, we're ready for round four, and now round four is the round that we then keep repeating and repeating until your raglan section is the size that we need it to be. So what we will do is exactly the same as the round we've just done, but it's just worded slightly differently in the pattern so you can then just carry on. Now, pop that stitch marker out work my next stitch so I can then have a bit of space to pop the stitch marker in and then pop that one in there. 
So you'll see the first stitch of the round will get further and further away from this corner here. So then we just go for it and you work a half double crochet, a herringbone half double crochet, sorry, <laughs> in each stitch up until your chain one space, you make your corner, you carry on round, make your corner, carry on round, make your corner, carry on round and make your corner and then fill in the stitches up until you arrive at your stitch marker and then the next round your stitch marker will end up moving another one along on your raglan. So that's basically all there is to do. Round four, which is that round I have just um, talked through, is the set repeat for the raglan. So keep increasing for the amount of times it tells you in the pattern. Obviously it's a completely different amount of times depending on which size you're making. So make sure you check um, exactly how many it should be. And I also think it's a really good idea that every so often, every couple of rounds, just check how many stitches um, you've got because you needed to have increased by eight stitches for each round that you increase um, and it's very easy to go awry and if you do go awry it's better to fix it where where you are um, and do less frogging <laughs> pull less of your work back um, than if you do the whole raglan and then find that you're two out on this side um, and two over on this side that kind of thing so Carry on with that repeat for the amount of times that you need and then meet me back here and we will do some magic by folding it over, this is a very diddy version, and creating the main body. Okay, so once we've finished increasing for the size that you're making, so for this size that we're doing here, it's on round 17 we need to finish, we're at the point where we're now ready to um, split for the sleeves which is the really exciting part and then we can just work the body and you'll see that yours is shaped depending on the size you're making it's more obvious in some sizes than others um, it's into a rectangle so we see the sides here are going to be our sleeves and this is going to be the front and this is going to be the back so we'd always keep this as the back where um, it's not a very obvious seam at all and it, it's continuous rounds here so we can't see where it's joined but in the body section there is just a tiny little jog so make sure that stays at the back so you won't see it um, and what we're going to do we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet in each stitch up until our um, last stitch here before the chain one space okay so let's go ahead and do that um, making sure that you have moved your your stitch marker from the round below first And now here we are heading towards that last stitch before our chain one space. And then we need to pop a stitch into that chain one space. And then what we're going to do is we're going to completely ignore all of these stitches of the sleeve here. And we're going to fold it over, fold it in half. And we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet in the next chain one space that we come to. So this will become your sleeve, we fold it over and you work a stitch into that next chain one space. And that will now become the body. And now all we now need to do is work a herringbone half double crochet in each of the stitches along here, and that will be our front. And there we are at that last stitch before the chain one space. And then we're going to pop a stitch into that chain one space. And then you've probably guessed what we're going to do now. We're going to fold over and we're going to flip it so that we're heading back towards our stitch marker, but we're going to ignore all of these sleeve stitches here. And we're going to work a stitch into that chain one space to join it first. So just into there, into that chain one space. Now don't worry if they are a bit gappy there or feel a bit gappy there, that's absolutely fine because we're going to be working the sleeve into that space anyway, so we'll sort out any gaps that are there. And then we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet into each stitch to the last one. And then at the end of this round, what we're actually going to do is we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch um, because we'll then 
stop working in continuous rounds. I don't know what the term is for that. We'll work in rounds as opposed to <laughs> continuous rounds. Um, and we'll we'll start each each row will have a chain one um, to get to the height of it. And so here we are at the start of that round again, and we're going to slip stitch to join. Um, and you don't need to pop your um, stitch marker back in unless you really want to, because we're now going to have a really obvious point where our um, our round begins and ends. So here we are, we've got, this will be the front of our sweater and these will be our armholes. And it's starting to look like it should, hurrah! So for me, round two of the body is where the fun really starts because this is where we can begin our half double crochet herringbone moss stitch, which is such a mouthful to say, um, but it's a really stunning stitch that will give us oh, just so much lovely texture in this garment. So we're going to begin round two by chaining one, and then we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet into that first stitch there. And then we're going to chain one, and we're going to skip the next stitch, and then we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet into the next. And then we're going to chain one and we're going to skip one. And we just repeat those two stitches all the way around. So a stitch, a chain one and skip one. A stitch, a chain one and a skip one. I'm saying stitch because you don't need to hear me say the whole mouthful. <laughs> By now I think you know the stitch that we're using. We're going to skip one and we're going to work one. Chain one, skip one, work one, chain one, skip one, work one. And just go all the way around like this until you get back to that very first stitch of this round. And then we will join with a slip stitch and we'll be ready to work round three. And so here we are coming to the end of that round and we're going to chain one and then slip stitch into that first stitch to join. Round three is going to begin with a chain two. And now the first chain doesn't count, but our second chain will count as a chain one space in the next round. And then what we need to do is begin our moss stitch. So we're going to work into the back loops only from now onwards for the moss stitch. And we're going to go over the top of this chain one space that we can see here from the round before. And we're going to work into two rounds below. And we're going to aim for this stitch here and it's going to be the back loop only that we want to go for, which is really tricky to see here. But I have another video of me doing this stitch in chunky yarn that I will link to uh, because it's much easier to see in chunky yarn, isn't it? So if you think that would be helpful, then pop and have a look at that and then come back here and we'll carry on together. But we're going to pop a herringbone half double crochet stitch into that part there. And then we're going to chain one, we're going to skip the next stitch and then working over the top of this chain one from the row below, round below, sorry, we're going to work into the back loop only of this stitch here. And we're going to work our next moss stitch there. We're going to chain one, we're going to skip one, and then we're going to do the same again. We're going to work into the back loop only of two rounds below, and we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet. And you just repeat those two all the way around. So we're basically filling in the gaps from two rounds below that we created. And then when you get back to the beginning of this round, you're going to join to that chain two that we started with, with a slip stitch. And here we are back at the start again. And bear in mind this time around, you'll finish on the stitch because then we're going to join into that chain two space there. And that's that round complete. And now for round four, we basically need to alternate the way that we're doing those stitches and just fill in the gaps over the top here. So we're going to chain one and then we're going to go straight into working a moss stitch into that stitch two rounds below. So remember, we're going to go into the back loop only and that's what will give us that beautiful texture. And then you chain one, you skip one and then you work a moss stitch into the next one. 
So once you've got it, you've really got it with this pattern because it's only a two round repeat and it's only a two stitch repeat in each of those rounds. So this round, just keep repeating those two in that order and then slip stitch to the first stitch when you get back to the beginning. So this is the end of round four. And we're going to slip stitch into the first to join. And then round five is just an exact repeat of round three. So we're going to chain two, we're going to skip that stitch that's underneath us, and then we're going to start our moss stitch working into the next one. And we chain one, we skip one, and we work the moss stitch into the next one. And so the reason that we've done it this way, um, in saying that repeat, repeat this round, um, is so that when you're reading the pattern, it, it seems much easier then, because what we're then going to do is repeat rounds four and rounds five for the amount of times that it tells you in the pattern. So now you know what the established stitch pattern is, you need to pop to the pattern and see how many rounds of it you need to work for the size that you're making. Or if you'd like to customize it, this is the great thing about top down things, is that you can um, try it on as you go, if it's for you or whoever it is, if you've got access to them, um, or measure as you go. And so you can work to whatever length you'd like it to be, uh, making sure that you finish on around five, because then we'll need to come back together and we'll work the final round of this main body stitch. And then after we've done that, we'll be ready to work the bottom rib together. So go ahead, work the main section of your body um, and then we'll finish off and then pop the sleeves on. So now we've got to the part in the pattern where it tells us to work our final round for this moss stitch and that's slightly different. So I've done 40 rounds here and I'm working on round 41 now for the size I'm making. And that will be different for different sizes obviously depending on the length, but this is somewhere where you can change the length if you want to. Bear in mind we're going to pop a rib on the bottom of this, but if you want yours to be longer or shorter, then this is the part where you can adjust it. So just work a different amount of rounds. Um, and the way that we now close this off, because now the next round, we don't want these chain one spaces to happen. We are going to close those off and not give ourselves any more spaces to work into. So we're going to chain one, and then you're going to begin as you would normally with um, a herringbone moss stitch in that first one. And now I will say here that for different sizes, this, this sequence will be different. You may well be working a single crochet there for the size that you're making. So just watch out, but the principle is exactly the same. And then we work a single crochet in the next one. And that closes that gap, doesn't give us a chain one space as we would normally have done. And then we work a moss stitch in the next. And then a single crochet in the next. And then a moss stitch, and you see you just Go around um, putting a moss stitch where you would normally put a moss stitch and then popping a single crochet where you would normally do a chain one and skip one. So work all the way around um, and then go back to where you began, slip stitch into that first stitch and then we'll be ready to start the rib. And there we are there at the last stitch and we're going to slip stitch in that first to join. Okay, so now we've finished that final round of the main body and we've closed all of these stitches up and not left any chain one spaces, we can now work the bottom rib section. And this is another part that you can customise the pattern with. You can make it as long or as short as you like, or you completely leave it off. It's entirely up to you. Um, but in the pattern for this size, we are going to begin by chaining eight. And if you've ever worked a, a rib in a join as you go method, you'll know exactly what I'm up to here. But if you haven't, let me walk you through it. So we make the chain and then we rotate so that we're going to be working back and forth in rows. So the rib goes like this back and forth. Um, and as we work the rows, we then join them to the stitches around the bottom of our last row because we've got all of those lovely stitches. It's nice and easy to see where they go. You're not going to do any guesswork here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the back bump of our second chain from the hook. So it's this one here. And we're going to work a single crochet into there. And then we're going to work a single crochet in the back bump of each of the other chains that we have. 
Now, I always like to work in the back bump of stitches anyway, but I find it especially important here because what we're going to do is work our way around the um, last round that we've got here, and we're going to come back to this chain here. And if it's um, wobbly, or you, you'll end up with gaps if you don't work in the back bump, is what I'm trying to say. So here we are, have we got seven? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and the last one will give us seven. And so now we're back to the stitch that we started at on this last round. Let me tuck this underneath so you can see it better against the background, there we go. So we're on that stitch there, and what we're going to do is now slip stitch into the next two stitches of this final round here. So one and two. And then what we need to do is flip our entire thing. Now you won't need to flip the entire thing if it's sat on your lap because you can just rotate back and forth, but I know you won't see very well if I do that. So then what we're going to do is find the back loops of these seven stitches that you have here, and you're gonna pop a slip stitch into each of them. So we've got seven to go, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now it will feel all sorts of fiddly at the moment, but don't worry, it does get easier the more of it you do. So over we go, and I do turn before I do my chain one, and I find that works much better um, on ribs, definitely it does. We're going to chain one, and I'm going to find the back loop here, and we're going to go one single crochet in the back loop, and a single crochet in each back loop as we go along. Now sometimes I do find that this last one here tries to hide, but just dig it out, pop your single crochet in there, and then we're back here. Give it a little tug so you know which stitch you're definitely in here, because it's very easy to get confused. And then we're going to slip stitch in the next two. And then we're going to turn, because you probably guessed what we're doing now. We're doing this two row repeat. We're going to look for the back loops here, and we're going to work a slip stitch in each of those back loops. So your stitch count will always stay the same. And then we turn. We chain one. And then you're going to single crochet in the back loop only. And the last one's really hiding down there. There it is. And then we're going to slip stitch in the next two. And so all we need to do is keep repeating those two rows. So a single crochet in the back loop only, and then you slip stitch to join in two, and then a slip stitch in the back loop only on your way back. So go all the way around. Now it will slant, that is what it does, but when we block it, it will pull out really nice and neatly. So don't worry about it wanting to curl in this direction, that's really normal. Just pull it when we're, when we're blocking, we just need to be very careful that we get it to line up straight. So carry on working all the way around your bottom of your sweater. And then what we'll do is we'll come back to here and when you're ready, when you're at this point, come back and we'll join it together and end it nice and neatly. So once you get back round to your first row of your rib here, we're ready to join the two ends together. To complete the bottom rib of the um, sweater. So we're going to turn as if you're going to work just another normal row of this rib and what we're going to do is go into the back loop of that first stitch you need and then into the back loop of the first row of your rib and you're just going to work a slip stitch in those two stitches and bring them together and you just work all the way along the rib in the same way and that will join it all together and make a really nice neat seam and there we have our seam joined, so we're ready to break our yarn and then we'll weave in that end at the very end. So our next step is to um, add our sleeves and I wanted to show you on this little version that I've made already where, whereabouts they go and how it works. Um, because we're doing this raglan, we have already separated for our 
sleeves here and so we're going to work directly in rounds into this this space that we have this armhole that we've already got set and so that looks like this because we're going to now go back to working in this set pattern this herringbone moss stitch that we did at the bottom of the sweater and what we're going to do is we're going to subtly decrease the amount of stitches that we have and then work the cuff at the end and we'll do that for both sleeves but the thing that we need to think about is if you're worried about where seams sit like I am, one of the sleeves, depending on whether you're right or left handed, you'll have to have a go um, yourself and figure out. The decreases mean that your seam moves around, it spirals around the sleeve. So if you don't want your seam, it's not terribly unsightly, but you do know where it is. It's just here. I can just see it, but maybe I can just see it because I know it's there. But if if you if you're worried about being possibly able to see a seam on this side, you need to make sure that the seam sits towards the back of the work. So when you join to make your first sleeve, uh, the one that's going to work backwards around, you need to join under the arm. And then when you join to work the other sleeve, you need to um, start further around the back here. And the pattern tells you exactly how many stitches back each sleeve um, needs to start working and that will make sure that the seam is as hidden as it possibly can be. But I say if you're not worried uh, because it's really not that obvious then just start both of your sleeves down here at the underarm point. So for my first sleeve I'm right handed so my first sleeve I'm going to have the back of the sweater facing me and I know it's the back because I have just this really subtle seam here at the back and we're going to join our yarn directly at the point of the underarm seam um, because we are going to be working in the in the round so we're going to be going clockwise and so therefore our seam will move and shift this direction when i then turn and work this sleeve i'm still going to be working clockwise and so therefore my seam will go in this direction so if i start here then my seam will travel around to what will become the front of the sweater. So what I want to do is start further up the sleeve here at the back and then the seam will be hidden across the back here. So I mean either way you're, it's still going to be somewhere on your sweater it's just whether you would prefer it all to be at the back or whether you're happy for it to sneak around to the front. But again as it, they're, they're not that noticeable so if it's something that doesn't bother you or you, you fret about where to, to join etc don't worry about it just start both sleeves from the underarm point. So the sleeves for all the sizes are worked in exactly the same format, but with a differing amount um, of the set pattern between our decreases of where we, we um, pull our sleeve in. So we begin all of our sleeves by joining the yarn at the appropriate point. And then we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet stitch in every stitch and every chain um, around the sleeve or the armhole edge. So we've been working these um, throughout the top of the body, so you'll know exactly how to do this. But just make sure you catch every chain as well as every stitch, because there are some sneaky ones sat in there. And then when we get back to the beginning of that round, we are just going to slip stitch in that first stitch to join. And you might find there's a teeny little hole here at the underarm, but that's fine because we've got an end that we'll need to weave in at the end there. So that will pull together really nicely. Don't worry about that. And so then our second round of the sleeve is going to be to set up for us to work our herringbone moss stitch. So we've done this at, the, um, at this point where we separated for the sleeve. So it's exactly the same process. We're going to chain one and then we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet in that stitch there. Then you're going to chain one, you'll skip the next one and then work a herringbone stitch in there. Chain one, skip one and work a stitch. So that's the way that we go all the way around. And then again, when you get back to the first stitch, you're going to slip stitch in your first to join. And here we are at the end of that round and we're ready to slip stitch into that first to join. 
So the next round of the sleeve, we're going to launch into our established stitch pattern that we know from the bottom of the sweater here. So we're going to chain two, we're going to skip that first stitch that's directly underneath us, and then we're going to work our moss stitch down into this, this stitch here, the next one that we come along, over the top of this chain one space. So we're working herringbone, half double crochet still, just like that. And then we chain one, we skip the next one on the previous round, and we work right over the top of this chain one down into this stitch here. And we chain one, we skip one, and we work a moss stitch. And you just repeat those all the way around and slip stitch into your first stitch, which is which is part of that chain two uh, for this round. So don't get caught out by that. And so there we are, ready to join into that chain two space at the beginning of the round. And now we're going to carry on and work the second round of the established pattern that we know from the sweater uh, bottom. And so we're going to chain one, and then we're going to begin with a herringbone moss stitch right down into that um, stitch over the top of that chain one. And we're going to then chain one, we're going to skip the next one, and then we're going to work our moss stitch down into that one there. And so all we've done, we're doing exactly the same two stitches as the previous round, but we're just doing uh, them in a different order. And it will be really obvious um, as you get to the stitch, which stitch you need to pop into it. So we repeat that all the way around. And here we are back at the start and ready to slip stitch in that first one. And then we're going to repeat the round that begins with a chain two. And so we're going to skip that one underneath us and then work the moss stitch there. So just flip the sequence um, of the two stitches. So these have kept the stitch count exactly the same. And the next row, I'm going to show you how to do our decrease round and um, make two less stitches per round. Okay, so here we are, ready to slip stitch and join again. And now we can work our first decrease round. Now the decrease round is exactly the same um, every time you do the decrease round, and it's the same for all of the sizes. So these are the only three rounds you now need to know to then be able to follow the pattern and complete the sleeve in whichever size you're making. So in order to decrease, what we're going to do, we're going to chain one, and we would normally go over the top and work a moss stitch down here into this one, wouldn't we? But what we're going to do is we're going to join this moss stitch and then the next one together. So that looks like this. We're going to yarn over and start to work that herringbone moss stitch in there. And we're going to pull through that one loop. And rather than yarn over and complete your stitch, you're going to yarn over, you're going to completely ignore this next stitch along here, and you're going to work into this stitch as if you're doing another moss stitch down there. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to pop into that next stitch, yarn over and pull through and pull through one to make it into a herringbone stitch. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. So, should we do that again? Um, and it's only here at the very beginning of the round that we need to do this decrease. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to go down into that stitch as if you're making a regular um, herring, I say regular, it's not a regular stitch, is it Hannah? <laughs> a regular half, half double crochet herringbone moss stitch. And then what we're going to do is yarn over and we're going to miss this stitch here and we're going to work down into this one here. So we yarn over and pop through and then we pull through that first one to make it into a herringbone stitch. And then we yarn over and pull through all three. And now we've set ourselves up, we've got a stitch we've come across. So we're now ready to chain one and then skip one. And then we just launch into the normal pattern that we know um, by working a moss stitch, a chain one, skip one. And you do that all the way around and that will decrease your count um, of that round. And so for in the pattern, you'll see that each size of sleeve has a different um, position for the decrease rounds. But then the following rounds are all in the main set pattern and they stay exactly the same. So you know everything you need to know now to complete the sleeve. So pop to where um, your size is in the pattern and uh, find out where your decreases come, where your decrease rounds are. 
And I would, um, if you're a fan of stitch markers, I would pop one in um, at this point, even though we are joining and not working in continuous rounds, it can be really helpful um, to pop your stitch marker in at this point. And also every time you do a decrease round, I would just do a stitch count. Just make sure that you're on track and it's where you expect it to be. Uh, because that will make life a lot easier for you if you come off track somehow. You'll be able to figure out where you've come off track sooner. And then when you get to the bottom of your sleeve, I'll just show you in the smaller version, um, we do a cuff at the bottom exactly the same um, as we did at the bottom of the actual sweater itself. Um, and there are different numbers for different sizes. So do check in the pattern how many, but you can make your cuff as long or as short as you'd like it to be. And you work in exactly the same join as you go um, method as we did at the bottom of the sweater. And that is all there is to it. Once you've popped both of your sleeves on and added your cuffs, you are ready to, well, we've seen the neckline, we've already done that. Um, and your bottom, you need to weave in your ends, um, give it a nice little block, and you're finished. So I really hope you've enjoyed making this little uh, raglan sweater with me. Uh, as you can see, I've made quite a few versions already and they are really quick to whip up. So um, the important thing is to come and show me, come and show me your sweaters when you've made them. Um, I love to see what you've made and who you've made it for. They make amazing gifts and my, my boys aren't that inclined to wearing um, sweaters and jumpers, but they actually really love wearing these. So um, yeah, I will see you again soon and thank you so much for joining me.